Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. A different video today. We're going to be talking about why this might be the worst week in FIFA Ultimate Team history, why this game is in shambles, why the community is in uproar. I want to take a look at this with you guys today, professionally and logically, uh, because that's who I am. I'm an accountant, I am a businessman, and I uh, that's just also who I am uh, relationally, right? Professional. Um, I'm not going to take things out of context, and I want to present this to you in a way where you can understand EA's side a little bit as well, but also you know how you feel, and you feel the animosity and the anger towards EA, and especially with this week, this has not been a good week for FIFA and for their game. The publicity that it is getting, the news lines, and the headlines that is being created because of stuff that has gone on this week has just been not good at all. So I want to talk about some of that stuff today, and of course... Um, just my opinion on a lot of this stuff as well. Why I think EA runs this game the way that they do and why we are led to feel such, you know, anger and stuff. And we, we feel like this game could be a lot better, right? I think we can all agree on that. I want to talk through some of those things today as well. But first, let's talk about what has been going on this week that has been just creating a massive madness on this game. I think this started it all off. The whole Kurt banning situation... They banned Kurt's EA account, uh, which is what we thought from this message right here, which was posted on Electronic Arts' um, main Twitter account with 4.5 million followers. They tweeted this out. And to us originally, and it read that Kurt's EA account was going to be banned. Not like Kurt himself was not ever going to be able to play EA Sports games again. But tonight, we found out otherwise. So... And this kind of started things off with the, the EA uh, banning Kurt's account, his foot founder, which was a huge, you know, Keemstar got involved. Supposedly they're creating something. I don't know what's going to happen with that. But we had this happening. Of course, we had the servers that were going down all the time this weekend. That, that impacted their game uh, widely as well because servers were going down during light. I think servers were down when they were like trying to sell packs. Was it Saturday maybe? I think servers were down when they had packs out. And uh, so that helps them not, or that inhibits them from making some money. Uh, also, that just that inhibit that that affects everybody on the game, right? From a casual player who's maybe trying to get into their first week in league or trying to get on the game, they're not able to get on the game, and that also affects the hardcore player, us over here, either trying to trade, trying to get like elite three in the week in league, or just get your 14 wins, which is probably all you need to do these days, anyway. Um, but that affects everybody. Then, of course, we had the whole pro qualifier madness with that stuff happening over the weekend. And then tonight, again, as I mentioned before, the second ban, which was on uh, Kurt's Twitch account, which we found out, okay, EA was actually banning Kurt from like not playing any of their games because they did a copyright infringement or whatever. I don't want to talk about that too much. Uh, I just want to talk about all of these happenings and all of this stuff as a whole and how it affects the EA and how it puts them in a negative light because... Why is this a big deal for EA? Why would EA be putting out a message on their Twitter account with 4.5 million followers that they're banning one player of their FIFA 20 Ultimate Team, their FIFA 20 game? Why does that matter to them? Because of the publicity, because of the things that it could do, because they know the power, right? They know the power of somebody, of Kurt. They saw the, the masses, the... You know, the following that he had of people that he was kind of like rising up a rebellion or an army against EA. And that's how it was kind of the picture was being painted. Right. And that's how we a lot of people in the community have been painting this picture um, of EA the past couple of years. Right. It's really started to unfold the past couple of years where we just kind of had this animosity towards EA. And we've kind of just had this anger. and We've kind of been upset with them because we feel like things in this game are manipulated sometimes to benefit them and to hurt us. And also, we just think that this game could be a lot better in many different ways. We feel like this game could be way better in all different areas, all different facets. Um, and that's where kind of the animosity and the hatred and the anger kind of comes from, from the community towards EA. But why, why does that even begin? Like, why does that anger and why does that stuff even begin? Uh, is why, like, EA wants to... That's why EA is feeling the heat this week, I guess. With all that anger and all that stuff that's going on, they realize that, hey, this is something we probably need to squash because we're a business, right? They know that a lot of this publicity, like, for goodness sake, this article over here that I just showed you, that we're going to read through in a second, 
This is from IGN. IGN, like one of the biggest news outlets for gaming and throughout the world. And this was posted yesterday on IGN about the whole, um, the rock, paper, scissors situation with the professionals. And of course, with um, Giuseppe, the, with the one of the pros playing in the qualifiers, who, where's his tweet? Right here. Oh, it, it, uh, the penalty kick that like hit the post and went in, but it didn't count uh, in that game, which was crazy enough. And so all of this stuff is just bad publicity for them, which hurts them as a business. And first and foremost, EA, as you can, as we can tell, they operate as a business, right? Because people own them, right? Shareholders own EA Sports. And what does EA do? EA is trying to make money to please those shareholders and show that their investment in the company is allowing the company to grow, to make more money, and then to get a return on their investment someday. That's the whole point of capitalism, right? Of capitalism and business and growing. EA Sports is trying to grow as a company to please its shareholders, to make more money, and then everybody's happy. That's the whole point, right? And this would be a situation where EA might be taking some flack, taking some heat, which could hurt their revenue, hurt, hurt their outlook, and hurt their just how they're viewed, which, you know, they've been viewed kind of poorly, I think, in the gaming scene for a long time based on other things that I've read online. For goodness sake, there's a whole Wikipedia page on EA that is like the um, arguments against EA or like the way, the, why people are feel mad against EA and, and talks about all of EA's like bad accomplishments of them getting like top 10 worst companies in the United States, like a certain number of years in a row and even being number one a couple years. So like the fact that that stuff is out there, people know, like this isn't a secret. This has been this way for a long time that this is such a money grab type of organization. It seems that it's run that way. Um, and kind of why is that, right? There's kind of two things that I want to break down is why I think EA is also viewed in this way and why they kind of run their business the way that they do. Because I'm, I'm thinking of it from an EA standpoint as well, right? Because we can look at it from our standpoint all we want, right? We want the best football simulation game that we can get, right? And they're the ones that have, you know, the, the most applicable and the, the best one right now. I mean, our, all arguments aside, Pez does not really come up to this FIFA 20 game in terms of the content that EA puts out and all the rights and the licenses that EA has, it is head and shoulders above the rest because it's just, it's got a mon monopoly on the sport of football. FIFA 20 and EA Sports has a monopoly, right? It's just, it's just kind of the way it is and it's the way it's been formed because it's not like everybody can have all these licenses. You know, only one person can have them because they want sole like, usage of that because it's a license and they want to be the only one to have it because... That way they can make more money off of it. Exactly, right? That's kind of how it goes. This is a big, big business. But again, the two things that I want to point out here on why I think that EA is feeling the heat and why I think EA runs their business in the way that they do. And the two things that we can pull away from that is number one, culture. EA Sports and like the culture of their business this is the best word that I have to describe it. The motivation, what is their motivation? It's the money. We know that the motivation is the money makes sense a little bit, right? As a business, right? But you can value money in different ways. You can value your consumer first. You can value your consumer first in the long run. After you value your consumer, they grow with you. They have a happy, a good relationship with you. Think about Fortnite. Now, Fortnite might not be the best example, but Fortnite kicked off with a bang because people loved the game. They created a game people love to play. They didn't make it pay to win. You had to pay, what, it was like 10 bucks for the battle pass in Fortnite and you were good for however long that season lasted? And then you could renew it for free after that? Is that how it worked? I didn't play a lot of Fortnite. But it was not pay to win. It was, they had great communication back and forth between customer service with Epic Games and they valued the customer. EA Sports is the opposite of that. EA Sports is trying to grab some money from the customer while they're there, while they can. To, it's like a money grab, a quick in and out almost. Whereas a guy or, or a game like Fortnite or a game where you value the consumer is valuing you over time, which you would think is the smarter play and, and the correct way and the right way to do it. Because if you value the consumer over time, that consumer has more of an incentive to grow with you and to form a stronger relationship with you, which could mean spending more money on the game and on stuff in the future as that relationship progresses, right? That's why I think the culture at EA is just mixed up. It's the wrong way, right? They value the quick in and out. They value just the money grab way of doing things instead of 
uh, forming a relationship and creating a consumer base that is happy with their product and happy with them. That's not the way that it seems to be right now because you can make both both money you can make money both ways but the way that they're doing it is not valuing the consumer which doesn't make the consumer happy which ends up in the end probably not making them as much money because instead of you know one scoop here you get them all the way this time right you're just money 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 the whole time right that's why i think valuing the consumer would yield a higher amount of money from ea sports but hey that's just me as an accountant and a businessman from what i have observed in life so far, uh, and also with this company, which I think this EA Sports has taught me a lot, honestly. Being an accountant has taught me a lot. Being a businessman has taught me a lot. But being like seeing EA Sports has taught me a lot as well. Almost taught me kind of how to not run a business in a few senses, but also on how to. So EA, you're doing something, I guess. Second thing, I talked about culture for a long time. Second thing is communication. Kind of goes in with like the value in the consumer base thing communication we just don't know what happens at ea we don't know what goes on after i click in this game what goes on in there to who is the one making decisions to put this content into the game who is hiring this person what are the core values and the motivations behind putting a certain amount of packs in ultimate team that day or sitting or setting a price range that day or failing to upgrade cards until a certain time or not doing things lickety split like they could be done with the press of a button or not releasing content or releasing tons of content why the communication on some of those things now of course it is a business right and you know if they're trying to make money in some of their deceiving ways it, it seems sometimes with the way that they release content on this game do they really have to tell us a lot of that probably they never would but at least some communication going back and forth on you know Lots of stuff like improving the servers or feedback that we give that we just feel like is one-way feedback. It's like us talking to a brick wall sometimes. We just never get anything back. And then sometimes we get nothing back and they blame it on us. Like for the Icon SBCs, you guys said that these are above the threshold. It's too much for you to pay. No. When did we say that? We just wanted the SBCs. So that kind of stuff is just misunderstanding that all could be um, worked out with communication, right? Good two-way communication would help a lot of things in this game, in my opinion. But again, back to EA and why this whole situation kind of hurts them, right? We just talked about culture and communication. Their culture is to grab the money and go. And right now, this is kind of hurting them. I want to take a quick peek at some of these articles back over here. This is actually from EA Sports, Electronic Arts, um, earnings call transcripts from quarter two and quarter three of this past year. So quarter two would have ended September 30th, 2019, right before FIFA 20 was like officially out or right around that time frame. So it doesn't have a lot of revenue and a lot of the stats from the beginning of FIFA 20. Then also quarter three, which we're going to look at right here is from, it ends on December 31st, 2019. So that would have the half first half of the year of FIFA basically. So Read through some of this and what it says. You can kind of get a glimpse. And this is what I talk about a lot, right? I'm an accountant. So I prepare a lot of stuff like this uh, and the information that goes into these. I prepare the, you know, putting all the statements together and putting all the information together for that company so that they can present it to their shareholders. And this is what they're doing here. This is EA presenting information to their shareholders over that quarter of the year and of how much money they made and just talking about their business because their shareholders want to know. Enhancements in core gameplay and Ultimate Team are also re-engaging more franchise veterans with unique players in FIFA Ultimate Team growing 22% over last year. People are playing more FIFA than ever with total in-game matches up 30% year over year. As players continue to engage in the FIFA 20 experience and Ultimate Team, our FIFA 20 Global Series is kicking off in November with millions set to compete in our unparalleled Nine month worldwide esports competition. Unparalleled. Unparalleled with people playing rock, paper, scissors to decide who is going to be going on in the tournament, or unparalleled by the failure to connect those two participants in the first place to be able to play the game. But it's your unparalleled esports competition. Mm, interesting. Anyways. You can tell that they regard this very highly. They're calling it unparalleled nine-month worldwide esports competition. This is something they're trying to sell to the people that own their company, the shareholders, that this is a big thing, right? Here they go on more about it. Last season, 
More than 800 million minutes of FIFA esports content were watched, and with sponsors like Adidas and others breaking new ground, we're excited to reach an expanding audience with more content, uh, and yada, yada, yada. So they're they're pushing that there's more people playing FIFA, and they're pushing that um, the pro scene is kicking off and it's unparalleled, right? Let's look at quarter three. What do they say in quarter three? So this is basically after FIFA 20 has started until December 31st, 2019. To FIFA 20 and the updates and Ultimate Team. Uh, foot matches are up nearly 40% year over year from launch through quarter three. There is one reason why foot matches are up 40% from launch compared to FIFA 19 from last year. That's what this is saying. Icon swaps. Think about what they added to the game. The only way to attain icons for a lot of players in this game, for people that can't go and buy them because they just don't spend a ton of money on this game, is by playing games. That's the mode and the, the way that you attain cards this year through objectives. They've done a lot through objectives this year, especially with the icon swaps. Now, we can talk about the quality of the icon swaps all day, but this is what I think is the huge reason here. 40% year-over-year increase in games played because of icon swaps. FIFA 20 is also the number one most engaging title in our subscription services. Okay, we're now getting ready to launch two major additions to FIFA 20 experience with our prestigious South American club tournaments, Comedy Bowl, Libertadores, and Comedy Bowl Sudamerica, which we are getting that, com that uh, content right now. But I mentioned in some of my other videos that if they're mentioning this in their earnings calls, then it's something that is very, very important to EA Sports, and they think it's going to be a big difference maker for their game, so it's probably going to make some sort of an impact on us as players of the game if they're talking about it in their earnings calls, right? You don't ever see them in the in here talking about how they're going to be dropping this many packs in for a lighting round, or how they're going to be adding this super dope promo called Carnival. They didn't talk about that last year before they added it, right? But they were like so proud to get these licenses this year that they, they had to talk about the Economy Bowl stuff. But basically, I wanted to show you guys these because you can tell a lot company reading through these transcripts and you can tell what they're trying to push and what they're trying to tell you and feed you information wise and what they're trying to tell people that reading these are FIFA is doing well FIFA is making a lot of money FIFA is bringing more people onto the game which obviously brings in the opportunity to make more money and we have cool new things going on with the pro scene and with these new licenses that we have purchased right this is all the good stuff that they're saying about the game. They're never going to talk about these disconnects, the rock, paper, scissors, and stuff like that, but that information is now getting out, and that is what people are going to remember, that they have a bad taste in their mouth right now about this stuff, right? Even an EA statement said, a double failure to connect and compete in a qualifying tournament match results in a loss for most participants. This is to prevent connection issues from being exploited. However, rather than playing, you know, it just... It's like a cop-out answer almost to why in the heck you would have people play um, how rock, paper, scissors to decide this, right? And it's just kind of a testament to how underwhelming the pro scene actually is. Not to mention, have we mentioned prize pools yet? We haven't even mentioned prize pools, but the, it's unparalleled, right? That's the kind of stuff that we get just get mad at and that's the stuff that we get angered at with this game because it's just not up to par and it's just not where it could be. And that's partially why we get upset. But again, EA is a company, right boys? EA is a company, they're trying to make money and they're actually being pretty successful at doing it. So what is gonna make things change? What is gonna make EA start to comply with us more or what is gonna make the game change so that we're happier? I can tell you one thing, the game is not going to get better by us um, attacking EA employees and uh, threatening them. I'm not I'm not saying that Kurt did a ton of that because, you know, Kurt did make some comments. I'm not here to comment on those comments that he made. Um, I, I will say that I do think he went a little bit too far, but that's him, his, that's him, that's him, not me, right? That is him, not me. I'm a totally different person than what Kurt is. I may have handled it differently. Um, but I think we're kind of coming from the same spot is that we just want to see the game better and we just don't get any communication. So we're frustrated. And so we're upset when we try to maintain, we try to make things better. Nothing happens, right? Not much happens. And that's where the anger is really coming from. But what can we do? Obviously people talk about, we can leave the game. Yeah, we can leave the game, but if you really want to go play another game, that is a football simulator, where are you going to go? Right? Pez, it's okay. Football manager, totally different. Um, EA just has it all. EA has a monopoly on this football content and on all the stuff that is football related in this world. 
that it makes it hard to go anywhere else but here. But how can we still make a difference? I push this to you guys all the time. And, you know, I don't I don't say that, you know, you have to spend a few points or that it's um, you don't spend a few points. It's like evil if you do that. I'm just saying, please consider if you're somebody who has spent FIFA points at all this year, um, you can go without it. You can you can literally go without it. If if tons of people all over this world, if we have a couple million people that instead of spending, you know, twelve thousand FIFA points every month, if they if they just spend zero every month for this next FIFA, that's gonna make a dent. If, especially if you have millions of people doing it, it's hard to do that. Of course, this FIFA community that's on Twitter, right? Like I have. 7,000 followers on Twitter, right? That's not even close to a million people. So me telling you guys to do this is not going to change this whole entire game. It's just this company is massive and the amount of people that play this game is massive. It's going to take something huge for something to change with this game. Um, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you to do nothing because there are. if you do nothing, then absolutely nothing is going to happen, right? If you sit here and do nothing, what's going to change? Nothing. If you make an attempt at least and you can maybe start something, then that's when things can start to be accomplished. And of course, if EA would just open up to us and have some communication and maybe start to value the consumer a little bit more as well, then we could get somewhere. But again, it's going to be hard to make a dent or to make an imprint ourselves in this game by just not spending money. But I think money and losing the rights. Like I, uh, I saw something the other day about uh, if you remember Star Wars Battlefront came out and Disney, who owns the rights for Star Wars Battlefront, um, threatened to pull the rights away from EA because the feedback from that game, Star Wars Battlefront, when it first came out, was so bad that um, Disney was like, hey, we don't like our rights being viewed this way and catching all this hate and this heat because people want to use our rights for our Star Wars stuff in the game and use it and have fun, right? And right now it's not being fun. So if somehow, I don't know how the rights and stuff works, again, that's part of the communication thing that we just don't know how this all works. I don't know if we ever will, but we just don't know. But if somehow EA would like have challenge for the rights or if whoever owns the rights says, yo, this game right now, it's not making us look good. We're going to pull out and, you know, or we're going to threaten to pull out. That would change things for sure as well. And the last thing I want to talk about is we're, this is stuff is going to be lingering in the community for a long time. And I want you to make sure that you Always put things in perspective and put things into context, right? This is a video game, all right? This is a video game. You love football. You love the sport. Your favorite team, your club is going to be playing. It's still going to be happening, right? You still have real-life IRL football. You can go out, play some football yourself, get on a team. If you don't play already, you can go out and find a ball and have some fun that way. Just remember to keep things in perspective that this is just a game and a subset of the actual sport. It is not entirely everything, all right? You know, this is a job for some people. It is not for me. If this were to vanish right away, I would still be okay. I would still be fine. I would still be okay, right? And I think you would be too, right? I know football is massive. We have a passion. We have a love for the game and a love for the sport and a love for how we can use that in the simulation of FIFA 20. But always keep things in this perspective. There are bigger things in life than just this this video game, all right? That's what I wanted to leave you with. But again, I wanted to make this video today to kind of talk over everything, put my opinions and kind of my information and my view on things, being an accountant and being, um, you know, knowing business a decent, a decent amount. I wanted to talk through some things with you guys today. Hopefully we see something change. You know what? I'm gonna be hopeful. And you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna stop speaking my mind and being, I'm going to do it in a professional and a respectful manner because that's how I feel is the best way to do things. I hope you guys can align with me on that as well. I don't want anybody ever from my community, if you watch me or if you associate yourself with me or anybody, if you even if you don't for that matter, I don't feel like it's just good to go out and to hate on somebody just for the reason that you're upset, right? Take a step back, use some common sense, think about it, cool down for a second, and then maybe go on a more constructive but also have an open mind because there should be two sides to every story and to every argument, right? Hopefully we can get EA's side at some point. But again, I want to bring you this information today just to talk about it, to talk over it. And um, yeah, just to provide maybe a little bit of my insight on it. So if you enjoyed this video and if you have any comments, of course, who cares if you enjoyed this video? I, don't, I didn't enjoy making this video. But if you have any comments, put them down below in the description. I'm still going to be playing FIFA 20 because this is the game that I've spent all my time on this year. This is the best representation of a football simulator that we do have. 
Uh, will I maybe branch off and try some other things? Does Pez interest me a little bit? Sure, it does. We might save that for some time down the road. Uh, but for now, I'm going to be staying with FIFA because I have a diligence and a duty for you guys to show you how to make coins in this game because you guys love this game just as much as I do. We just wish that it could be better, right? We just wish that it could be better. So hopefully someday we can get there. Uh, but again, if you enjoyed it, maybe hit a thumbs up on it. Of course, subscribe if you are new. And I will catch you guys in a video tomorrow. All right, boys? Peace.